This man's named Sam Hauser. He is a leader of the Rockstar Game Company. At home, he was watching the news about the success of the game GTA Vice City that has been circulating in the market. Even in the office, one of his friends named Terry said that they managed to sell 1 million units in a day. So crazy. Because the game GTA Vice City was a huge success in the market, they then had another meeting to determine the next step. They want to take it to the next level by making a new GTA called GTA San Andreas which is more realistic and with a cooler style that can give emotions to the players. Sam's plan for the next GTA game was to create a black main character. During the meeting, his friend thought the idea was quite crazy. As British, they don't want to make something sensitive in America. Because the GTA game itself is set in America and even their office is also in America. But Sam says it's because they're British that they see America as it is. This conversation continued in the bar. There he still wants the main role in GTA is black people which if done, they will be the first to make black people as the main character in a video game. On the other hand, an 18-year teenager named Devin Moore is playing the GTA game at his house. Because he was too engrossed in playing GTA, he seemed to get carried away and got too deep into the game, so that one night, he committed the theft of a car like in-game and even injured the officer conducting the investigation. He then deliberately parked on the side of the road so that the police could easily catch him. At the police station he then questioned by the police. After a bit of interviewing, the police then opened his handcuffs to take his fingerprints. But suddenly... He carried out the murders like a professional criminal like in a GTA game. Because of that incident, Devin finally went to jail. There he got a lawyer named Jack Thompson. Jack is interested in taking the case from him, because he reads the news about the case in an online media where Devin says that life is just like a video game. So he asked about it to Devin directly jailed. At home, he then told it to his wife. He tell that Devin was actually clueless with what he was doing. Inside his mind, he was just playing a video game. According to him, Devin is a stray teenage because when he was detained in prison, he panicked. Jack thought a teenage like Devin couldn't possibly pull off such an act unless he had spent hours practicing in games where characters could kill cops. Jack felt that the person who made the game had to take responsibility, because it has showered child until teenage with crime and violence through video games, which seemed to make crime look like a normal thing. Feeling disgusted by the incident, Jack and his wife decided to defend Devin and sue Rockstar Game for responsibility. In the morning at the Rockstar Game office, Sam gives his idea for the next game. He wanted the CG character to be able to shave his own hair, get tattoos, do sports, and more, so that their next video game can outpace the film. Then they went looking for materials for the game setup by visiting black people's locations directly, guided by their black colleagues. When they were taking pictures, suddenly they were visited by a group of black gangs. Luckily, when it was explained that they were from Rockstar Games who made GTA games, they were immediately greeted warmly, because they are also fans of the GTA game. Elsewhere, Jack invites his friend Ray who also works as a lawyer. Ray has the same belief that Rockstar as a game developer must take responsibility for the Devon case. They assured the victim's family that Devon's actions were not premeditated. The crime that Devon committed was the influence of the violent games he played for weeks. However some of the victim's families disagreed. Because if Jack blamed the video game, it would result in Devon being innocent and able to go free. Jack then reminded the victim's family that their actions were not to free Devon who had already been punished. But also that Rockstar takes responsibility and can provide compensation to the victim's family. Jack is sure that he will win to achieve this justice. After that meeting, he finally filed a lawsuit against Sony as the maker of the PlayStation, and Rockstar as the game developer. In that press conference, he also declared that he would destroy Rockstar's game. One of the team members then conveyed the demands to Sam and asked him to always be aware. Before fighting Rockstar in court, Jack tries to play GTA at his house. There he became shocked, because from the beginning of the game, the characters in the game are directly directed to commit violence and crime. It can be seen that they started looking for each other to find out what their opponents like. Jack then gathered expert witnesses such as doctors and the military to support his belief that violent games like GTA could trigger traumatic stress on the brain, especially the adolescent brain. The military even said that in the military, they also use video games as war simulators. But if done at home, it could be called a murder simulator. And they finally agreed to be expert witnesses in court. Because they also think that Devin's problem is a serious social problem. On the other hand, Sam and his team continued to finishing GTA San Andreas to the production stage. As violence and crime weren't enough, their Sam also wanted to add real adult scenes. So he ordered shooting to represent that scene in a game. But the next day, at Rockstar Games' office, they watch the news Jack is on TV and say, Rockstar Games has created a murder simulator that makes teenagers like Devin commit such crimes. Their several team members suggested that what was at issue was the police killing, and it could probably be removed in GTA San Andreas. But Sam disagrees and wants to make GTA that way anyway. He thought that Jack just wanted to blame someone else for the case. He feels entitled to make the game he wants to make. Because this is America and America is a free country. 
Instead of blaming other people, it should be the parents who are to blame, or their failed education. Sam said, because of his actions on TV, Jack and his family began to get terrorized by telephone, even his son was ostracized on his sports team, and was intimidated by Anonymous. When he came home, his son said that maybe his father thought this game hurt people, but not all child and teenage will do the same thing Devin did. From there, Jack realized that his son was being bullied because of his actions against the Rockstar game. He then plans to go to his son's school to educate the students there so they can understand and so that his son will not be bullied again. At the office, Sam is angry that the adult scenes he wants to include in the game will result in GTA San Andreas getting an adult-only rating, which will have an effect on its future sales. After getting input from his team members, he finally agreed to remove the adult scenes in the game, considering that this game will soon be released. And to fight Jack Thompson, Rockstar Games hired the services of a high-level lawyer called Blankroom. On the other hand, Jack and his wife heard about it, they were not afraid and were ready to take any risks. In fact, he emailed Blankroom and say if their client was a man not worth defending, and if they persisted in defending Rockstar Games, then he thought they had tarnished the reputation of the legal profession. But Blankroom still comes to court and ignores emails from Jack. As a result of the email he sent, the Blankroom reported him to the judge, and it turns out that it is a violation of the code of ethics of fellow lawyers. The judge said that it was an act of arrogance that he did and as a result, Jack is not allowed to take part in that case again. Ray finally handled the case. Even though he is not allowed to take part in that case again, Jack still comes to see how the trial weigh. Long story short in the trial, the judge finally made a decision, because the expert witnesses gathered by Jack admitted that they had never met Devin Moore, and they don't know the details of the crime, then the evidence submitted could not be considered by the judge. According to the judge, the expert witness did not know whether Devin acted knowingly or not. The judge even said that Devin's act of violence was really programmed by a video game or not. Because of that, the judge ruled that the trial was over and Rockstar Game won. Jack, who felt annoyed and disappointed, then shouted and said that the decision was a shame. After the trial was over, a disgruntled Jack then came to the Blankroom team, but before he could say more, Blankroom said they were forced to take him to the state attorney's office to assess his actions in this case, especially on violations of the code of ethics that he did, but he still blames Rockstar Games for selling video games that are inappropriate for child until teenage. News of Blankroom's victory reaches Sam and he is relieved by the judge's decision regarding the suit. Next, he returned to the game GTA San Andreas which was about to enter its release time. All Rockstar employees worked hard to complete the game day and night, Two years of their work, finally the game was finished and then one of the team members submitted a copy to the video game regulatory agency. GTA San Andreas was officially released on the market and became one of the best-selling game consoles in the world. Meanwhile, Jack gets word that Blankroom has succeeded in convincing the state attorney's office to revoke his license. When he was talking to his wife, suddenly the house was pelted with stones which shattered the window glass. One day while he was playing golf, he prayed to God because actually he also can't stand against these people, because this ordeal is like destroying his soul and family. Meanwhile at the Rockstar Games office, Sam is feeling happy reading the comments from players who are very satisfied with their new game, coupled with the news of fantastic worldwide sales figures, made him and his team celebrate that news. The game attracted the attention of many people, especially game modifiers or commonly called modders, like Patrick, a man from the Netherlands who really likes the world of game modification, he found a programming code that is in the game, but not including the part in the game. He then deciphered the game code from GTA, and he found adult scenes he had previously wanted to include in the game. Apparently the code was not removed, but only hidden. One day, Sam and his team are shocked when the footage is leaked and goes viral on YouTube. The news about the virality of the video finally reached to Jack. There he thought that it was time to strike back at Rockstar Game. On the other hand, Patrick, who uploaded the video, was then chased by journalists for questioning. There he said that everything he posted was from the GTA disc. Contrary to what Rockstar Games said to journalists, there Terry blamed hackers or modders for changing the scene in the official version. Sam becomes angry that Terry blames the modders for this incident. Because in the game industry, modders are diehard fans. When this problem was widely discussed, Jack Thompson got his confidence back to fight Rockstar Game. He was even contacted by the United States Senator to come to the White House to specifically discuss the case. Rockstar Games as usual get help back from the blank room, though they asked how Patrick could get the footage. Sam honestly said that at first the scene was made to fill the game, but they cancelled and it was deleted, because that scene would have prevented the game from getting a nature rating. It turns out that the programming code was deliberately not removed because it would have an effect on other lines of code. Plus, GTA San Andreas was being chased by a deadline, so the line of code containing the adult scene is just hidden. This problem was even more lively when rows of people demonstrated in front of Rockstar's offices in America. They asked Rockstar to leave America because basically they are British people. The video game regulation party also spoke about it, and considers the adult scene material that is spread in society is true from the GTA San Andreas disc that is circulating in the market. 
Rockstar finally had to face accusations of defrauding rating agencies and defrauding game content, and must attend court. Blank Room explained that if the Federal Trade Commission succeeds in proving that Rockstar is guilty of fraudulent game content, then Rockstar will be fined millions of dollars which will bankrupt them instantly. Sam finally went to the Federal Trade Commission's office and was asked all kinds of questions about how there could be adult scenes in the video game GTA San Andreas. There, Sam told the process of making the game and the origins of how it happened that adult scenes existed in the GTA game he had made. Luckily, the Federal Trade Commission only advises Rockstar Game to have its own system to guarantee in-game content has been vetted. No penalties, no fines. Only had to promise that something like this wouldn't happen again, while good fortune was not on Jack Thompson's side. His fun ends because the state attorney's office wants to fire him for professional misconduct. And he must attend the trial. He was proven to have violated 31 kinds of ethical codes and he was finally dismissed completely from his profession as a lawyer. But because of that action, Hillary Clinton finally announced a family entertainment protection law that prohibits the sale of games that contain violence to minors. Jack Thompson managed to change the law, but unfortunately, he was unable to get compensation for the police victims of the shooting by Devin Moore. And the movie ends.